The story starts off with a destructive disabled at an auction. He keeps making faces at some pretty lady, but she's not interested because there's no color. They get to lot 666, which is an evil chandelier that killed people. They go into a flashback, but it's in color for some reason. The whole movie is a flashback, actually. Weird. Anyway, they're at an opera house in France, and singing happens. Uh, the opera house has new owners, but they don't really know anything about the arts. So they basically just go around pretending that they know what they're doing, just like real managers. They find a random hot lady and decide that she's the lead, but then some random guy tries to kill her. So instead they have the lady from Army of Darkness do it. And she's really popular. This lady is just an extra. She can't sing, we say without even asking if she can sing or not. Oh, we oui, monsieur, she can do it. She has a great teacher. Who is it? Uh, I, I don't know his name. Is it the opera ghost that randomly tries to kill people? Um, what? A partner of the new owners is Christine's childhood friend, so he goes to try and put the moves on her. The opera's manager's daughter is all like, Christine, you're great, but who's your teacher? My dead father told me on his deathbed he would send an angel of music to watch over me. That's my secret teacher. He sings to me at night and teaches me. Are you sure you're not just getting gaslighted by a deformed freak that lives in the basement? What? What? Anyway, the guy from The Conjuring is all like, let's go out and stuff, but the Phantom is totally smuckers, so he takes Christine to his dungeon. Hey, it's like me and stuff? Angel of Music, please guide me! Yeah, totally, just like come this way and stuff. Uh, yeah, just through this mirror and uh, we'll go to my dungeon. Dungeon! Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, we can play Dungeons and Dragons. What's that? Shut up and follow me into the sewers. So they go to his hideout and they sing and stuff, but then Christine violates social distancing protocol by taking off the Phantom's mask, so he tells her to go screw off. Because seriously, rude. Meanwhile, the opera owners are actively trying to ruin their new business. The opera ghost is going to sabotage us unless we pay him some money. We'd better not pay or call the police or generally do anything whatsoever. Great idea! In the meantime, everybody loves the new star, but hates the old prima donna. So let's make the old inferior star the lead again. Brilliant! So they put on a new performance, but the Phantom isn't going to tolerate insubordination. Did I not instruct you that Box 5 was to remain empty for my use? What do we do, Bert? Let's definitely not the code the constabulary or anything, Ernie. Excellent notion, good chap. The Phantom sabotages the inferior prima donna, but then he kills a guy, thereby ruining his pet student's chance to steal the show. Realizing that her angel of music is a murderer, Christine runs to the roof for some place with the guy from The Conjuring. Why are you running away from that murderer, Christine? It was the opera ghost! He'll even stoop to murder! Who would have thought that a ghoulish recluse would be so twisted? What's going on? I'm in danger and stuff! Okay, let's get married then. But we've only just reconnected for like 24 hours, and before that we hadn't even seen each other since we were children, and therefore by now we're completely different people as adults than we were when we were young, because people change as they grow up, and you're basically a stranger to me now. But sure, let's get married! I'm so glad we came up to this random terrace to have this deeply personal and betraying conversation. Yeah, staying within the property lines of the Opera House is definitely outside the range of the phantom that specifically haunts the building, so there's no way he could have followed us or overheard us at all! We're totally safe and in complete privacy! Since they didn't actually leave the Opera House, the phantom heard everything they said. He's pretty mad about Christine's engagement, even though he knew he had no chance with such a beauty. So he makes vague declarations of revenge at the sky. The Opera House sings about a masquerade party that never actually happens, but then the Phantom Mask of the Red Deaths the party. He callously tosses a precious opera script onto the floor. Here's Don Juan, your next play. I totally wrote it, even though this takes place in the year 1870, and one of the earliest renditions of Don Juan as a character was in the 17th century. I'm a genius! Even though he's completely outnumbered and could just be, like, gang-tackled and brought to the police, nobody tries to stop the Phantom. You're terrible, you're fat, you're dumb, you're a traitor. Then he bounces. But his brief time as the King of Atlantis makes Christine's fiancé extra brave, so he goes after the Phantom. There's a sequence with mirrors, but the Phantom doesn't eat a retarded kid's head off, so it's pretty boring. Then the guy from The Conjuring is all like, Opera manager, tell me about the Phantom. For no reason I know that you know about him. Oh, no, Bonsoir. Don't make me expose it. Not like this. Please, I must know. Oh, very well. I was at a circus and there was a freak, but then he killed the guy, so I helped him escape to this opera house. 
but I didn't visit him or anything, so he ended up becoming a weirdo, and now he lives in the dungeons beneath the property. Why are there dungeons beneath the- Christine goes to her father's grave, and then there's a sword fight between Conjuring Guy and the Phantom. It goes something like this. How you been, man? Not bad, actually. I found this crazy bag for swimming in- <laughs> Oh, motherfucker! Have a good day. Oh, really? <laughs> Fuck you! The Phantom loses the fight, but Christine asks Raul to spare him. No, don't kill him! Let's just go! Shouldn't we at least, like, take him to the police? I mean, he's defeated and all, and he did commit murder and extortion. No, let's just leave him here so that he can burn with rage and get violent revenge later on in the story! Okay, sounds good. So they go back to the opera house where they put on Don Juan! This time, they actually have police in attendance, and the Phantom shows up partway through to take the lead actor's place as Don Giovanni! Even though the real lead isn't as thin or tall as the Phantom, nobody questions the fact that the lead looks completely different after he changes costumes. They sing, and conveniently the lines of the opera match the lines the characters have to say to each other in the actual story. This is the point of no return! I've imagined our bodies entwined and stuff! No second thoughts! No backward glance it wait, wait, really? Christine violates social distancing protocols yet again, this time revealing that the Phantom was actually Wade Wilson. Oh my gosh, it's Deathstroke! That does it! So the Phantom makes the chandelier fall somehow, and the whole place goes up in flames for no reason. And also he abducts Christine. Also, this whole time, the police officers that were equipped with 1870 guns had plenty of opportunities to gun him down, but chose not to for the sake of dramatic timing. They go down to the dungeons again, and the Phantom chains up the fiancé, even though he lost to him earlier in the movie in one-on-one -on -one combat. Show some compassion and free her! The world show no compassion to me! Except for that one lady that went out of her way to free me, help me escape a police manhunt, and then safely brought me to this underground sanctuary where I apparently became a multi-savant for no reason, and with no education. Anyway, choose between me or him! So Christine chooses the third option of being a stereotype and makes out with the gross ghoul. The power of gorgeous lady juices makes the phantom depressed, so he lets them go and goes protocol omega with his hideout. They're coming! Go and don't let them find you! Even though I'm the criminal they're looking for, and you would be completely safe with them. So Christine and Raul elope and the flashback finally ends. Thank goodness. Back in the present where Keller doesn't exist for some reason, the destructive disabled, who was Raul the whole time, leaves the Phantom's monkey trinket at Christine's grave. You know, because the way to best honor his wife's memory is to remind her ghost that she was abducted by a freak. He also sees a rose on the grave, which he assumes was left by the Phantom. The end.